Hello and welcome to Arts 24, a simple celebration of an ordinary life. That's how British playwright and director Alexander Zeldin describes his latest show, The Confessions, currently on stage in Paris. You know what, Mum? I'll just give you back the money from this summer. No, I'll give it. I'll give it back to you so you can buy a television. You don't need to go back, you know. You're charming just the way you are. Based on hours of interviews with his own mother, it tells her story, and with it, the story of the second half of the 20th century, from the shadow of World War II to women's liberation. Both personal and societal, it's a reflection of Zeldin's hyper-real style of theater that strives to bring audiences, in his words, closer to the force of life. Alexander Zeldin, thank you so much for being here. Hi, thank you for having me. You talk about your mother as having had an ordinary life, but based on this play, her path was far from conventional, she went through a divorce from a violent first husband. She survived rape. She moved across the world from Australia to England. She married your father, a Holocaust survivor in the show, uh, who died when you and your brother were teenagers. What made you decide to write about her life? Well, I mean, first of all, you know, it's very explicitly based on her life. So the, the, the process was uh, this very wonderful conversation over several days that I had with my mother at a period when I felt she wasn't going to be with us much longer. And I'd wanted for a long time to write a play that would be a whole life. And I also wanted it to be a play about somebody who is perhaps not considered a great heroine or hero of our time. It wasn't the life of Edith Piaf or Muhammad Ali. It was the life of an ordinary person. And so these conversations that I had with her were incredibly transgressive in the sense that she told me things that perhaps a mother doesn't normally tell a son about the intimate path of her own heart and of her of her body, of her um, experience and her shame and her fears. And what I did is I very deliberately created out of this truthful basis a fictional thing, which is this play. Uh, so it's, it's, some of it is totally based on reality and other parts I've developed and, and invented. And I don't think it's important to know which is which. That's not the point. The point is that there's a column of truth and a column of love and um, care in the, in, the, in the root of the play. And how does your mom feel about all of this? You said that she, her, she herself has not wanted to see the show. Well, it's not so much that she doesn't want to see it, it's that she's now, she's quite unwell, and so it's difficult for her to travel. But, you know, I, I kind of want to take this away from being a story about my mom only. I think that what's important is that the artistic gesture, if you wish, or the, the starting point was this conversation. I just want to be honest with people about that because... As you said in your introduction, I am interested in bringing, using theatre to get us closer to seeing our own lives, seeing what's in front of us, uh, appreciating life in a, with a new freshness and intensity that perhaps we can't otherwise. Theatre in ancient Greek, theatron, means seeing place, place for seeing. And so my constant search as an artist is to try and find new ways of bringing life and sharing, sharing a view of what life can be and what life is. And behind this ordinary woman that you might see in the community centre, waiting to join a choir, there is this enormous epic. And it could have been your mum or another person's mum. That's the point. I wanted to find a starting point in something extremely ordinary in order to show that the scope and the attempt to create oneself, because I don't think you find yourself, you create yourself, that was the, that was the starting point in the search in this piece. Um, and so, you know, um, she may see it, she may not, but I think she certainly understands the artistic intention. Yeah. behind it because as you'll see from the play she wasn't she didn't become an artist or anything like that but maybe she wanted to and, and in some ways I guess I'm developing that want in my own life and when I saw the show someone sitting next to me in the audience uh, did describe it as you know cinematic the way that it spans decades in the main character Alice's life uh, let's get a feel now for the confessions I wanted to try and and you know finish uni Alice you failed at uni that's that's okay because you become a fantastic teacher and wife. You should be very, very proud of that. What's your fucking concept? Well, my fucking concept is that it's a more personal vision. I offer a reading, you're just saying how you feel. Oh, Jesus, shut the fuck up, Terry. What? No, what, what's, what's wrong with that? I want to I wanna talk about art and how it can teach us to live. Uh, my my yeah. dad was a painter. Oh, your so dad? I, well, I if your daddy says with... so, then... Uh... Uh, sorry, but the personal is political. Yeah, that's yes. right. Right on. <laughs> Depends on the person. 
And Alexander, your mother is played by two actresses, or the, the character based on your mother yeah, is... Alice. Played, Alice. Alice, yeah. Alice is played by two actresses, Erin Jean Norville uh, as a younger woman, and then yeah. Melda Brown as an older woman. At times, they're both on stage. One of the most striking scenes uh, I found is when Alice confronts the man who raped her, and it's actually the older actress mm. uh, who sort of takes over and orders yeah. him to strip Happy naked. Birthday. Where did the idea for that scene come from? Oh. Well, I mean, I don't want to give that away too much because uh, it's one of the central pivotal scenes in the play. But certainly this idea of a reparation that is done on an assailant came out of this initial conversation. And Alice is not my mum's name, by the way, and that's important. Um, it's, you know, Alice, a little bit like Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this, this, this idea for this exchange of them came very slowly throughout the process. I mean, my starting point was when I met Erin Jean Norville, who's one of the most incredible sort of stage actors, along with Pamela Rabe, who's come all the way from Australia to be part of this European tour and playing next week in London. You should say that to your viewers as well, <laughs> um, at the National Theatre. Um, it was very clear that I'd met somebody that could embody this different transformations, this attempt to forge herself against the current of the time. Because that's a story, it's an individual trying to become themselves or what they feel inside themselves that they are against society that is stopping them and isn't giving them a place for that, for that instinct that they have. And so the idea of this older person looking back on herself is totally possible in theatre and perhaps not even possible in cinema. Because in theatre, you're in many different time zones at once. You're at the time you're watching the play, the time of the events, the time of the performance. So you've got this constant shift between time signatures. And that felt important, that this older character could step into the shoes of the younger one in a scene that I feel is, I'm very proud of it, it feels like mm. a scene full of ambiguity and possibility that speaks about forgiveness, redemption, reparation, to a degree, repairing harm, but also about trauma. And the fact that this older body that enacts something that happened in her youth means that she's also carrying it with her. We can't say too much about it because we have to attract your audiences to yeah. come and see it in London. I will, I can say that it's at least a very powerful scene. Watching this play, I, I did also feel like I was getting to know you as well. Clearly my confusion has been clear between your mom and the character, uh, particularly in the scenes at the end uh, when Alice's husband, uh, your father, dies. You were just 15 years old at the time. That something that fundamentally changes a person. Yeah. How did that impact you Certainly as an artist? Way. Well, I think in many respects, um, you know, that what's, what I think is interesting about literature and theatre and life is that sometimes you use these things. You, I use theatre to get closer to life. So, you know, there's, there's several truths. There's my truth, your truth and the truth. As a, it's a Malian proverb, I think, that says that. And, and to me, that's, that's extremely precious, this idea of using art to get to something true. In a way, it's, I think, it, I can't remember who said this, it's a lie that gets you closer to the truth. So in a sense, it is, it is all true. And yeah, it impacted me enormously. Um, and I've, I've, 20 years later, I've been revisiting that period in two plays, you know, A Death in the Family, which I performed, which I created last year with a cast of French actors, um, revisited uh, the end of my grandmother's life around that time in a care home and was about the end of life. And this play, of course, which is also very autobiographical. But my hope is very sincerely that by talking about kind of transgressive, very intimate things from my own life and my own family, it will become, it will feel like recognition for many people in the audience and they will find something that resonates very deeply with them and um, does them some good as well, I hope. And as you said, you, you wrote a play um, ab about your father's death and your grandmother's death as well, and that play was in French. You yourself uh, learned French at a very young age. Uh, yeah. Can you talk about what it means to you to have your plays performed in French, uh, also in France, particularly as a British person in, in light of Brexit, perhaps? Sure. I mean, you know, Brexit was an, 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 you know, completely an ambiguous disaster on every level. Um, but for the area of life that concerns my professional sphere, it's been catastrophic. Um, it's, it's what it's meant above all is the next generation of artists from the UK and writers and uh, are gonna have much less opportunity to interact with their European partners and collaborators and friends and colleagues. Um, from my point of view, as a British artist, I, I felt like France was still a land of opportunity in some respects, where you know, I, had a, I had a space that I needed at that time to come and make a new piece of work. Um, although I would say that, you know, most of my work is still in the English language and in the English world. So in the UK, in London, and in New York. And that's where probably the most of my professional activity is concentrated. But I think you gain enormously from having 
I'm very fortunate in my plays are performed in dozens of countries, and so I'm able to see, learn from each of those audiences. You know, we can play Belgrade one the, one week and Paris the next, and each experience enriches what our understanding of the play is. Another one of your shows recently was performed in France. Love is about a group of people living in temporary housing. It's from your Inequalities trilogy, which explores the impact of austerity in Britain. Now, you have been compared to director Ken Loach, who makes films centered around societal issues, but I know that you don't appreciate that comparison. Why is that? I mean, Ken Loach is an absolute legend. He's an extraordinary person who, who has been very encouraging to many people, including me. He sent me a little note saying, I hear what you're doing and wishing you well, which was beautiful. Um, Ken Loach is a wonderful, wonderful artist, and I'm immensely proud to be compared to him. But all I'm saying is that I, I don't, I don't only want to work on social themes. You know, my all my work has. I think it's very interesting when people um, make such simple equivalences between. You know, if you were to say Ken Loach is the Dickens of cinema, I'm sure he wouldn't appreciate that either. It's, it's. I think nuance is important, and people want to be themselves. Uh, we ask all of our guests to pick another artist or a piece of work to highlight, and you've chosen another play. Tell us about the effect. Yeah, sure. I mean, so this is um, this has got one of the best actors in Britain, Papa Isaidu, who's who's playing the um, one of the leads in this play by Lucy Preble, who some of you will know from uh, the Succession TV drama, which I haven't actually seen much of, but uh, what I have seen, I really enjoyed. Um, but this is a remarkable play about people who go un undergo a drugs trial and fall in love, and they're not sure if it's the drug or their own feeling. So it talks about very profound themes around, you know, uh, medication of culture and and around what the actual nature of love is and of feeling. And it's, um, it's, it's at the National Theatre where I'm very proud to be an associate and it's bringing in a really different audience. Well, it sounds great. And the trailer looks uh, very interesting as well. We'll mm -hmm. end with a look at The Effect, uh, which just wrapped up at the National Theatre in London. Uh, Alexander Zeldin, thank you again uh, so much for being with us. Uh, the Confessions is running uh, through this weekend at the Odeon Theatre uh, here in Paris. It's then gonna be at the National Theatre in London. Uh, try not to miss it. Uh, thanks to, so much to all of you for watching and do stay with us on France 24. There's news coming up after this. Thank you.